Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Cosmos. But not this kind of Cosmos. We're going to be actually talking about Cosmos inside of our bodies. The so-called microcosm. And that's actually related to one of the studies that recently came out that was able to identify a tremendous amount of viruses living inside of our bellies. So in other words, we're not actually talking about stars and galaxies. Today we're really talking about trillions and trillions of tiny organisms living inside of us right now. And the study itself is quite groundbreaking, especially in what it actually discovered. But let's start with some of the facts we already know about our own body. For example, in one of the recent videos you might have discovered that inside of you right now there are roughly around 38 trillion different cells. Which is about 100 times more than there are stars in our galaxy, or about 20 times more than there are galaxies in the universe, at least the ones we can kind of see. Now in that sense, it's a huge number. And it's actually a number that's really, really difficult to imagine. But at the same time, we've also learned that our bodies contain roughly around 30 trillion bacterial cells on top of that. They don't represent a very large mass of our bodies, but in terms of the actual numbers, they're roughly about the same as actual cells. And for the most part, most of these bacteria are usually found inside the digestive tract in our system. But all of these bacteria present inside of us also have a kind of a battle going on. A constant battle with viruses. For the most part, viruses known as bacteriophages. Now, in general, bacteriophages are actually not really that dangerous. And also, generally, they kind of look like this. They look like really strange spider-looking creatures. And in the past, bacteriophages have also been used to, for example, treat various bacterial infections or using the procedure known as the phage therapy. But the point is that, well, there's a lot of them inside of us. And because we know that in terms of numbers, viruses sort of overwhelm anything on planet Earth, we can safely assume that the number of viruses present inside of our bellies most likely overshadow everything else, including bacteria, including regular cells. Here we're talking about numbers in quadrillions, maybe even bigger than that. And by the way, if you love various topics about bacteria and viruses, check out one of the previous videos I made that actually talks about a type of a bacteria that has learned to eat viruses. In other words, they found a way to kind of fight back. Should be popping up somewhere right there. But anyway, back to the study that we're going to be talking about. So essentially, this particular study that you can find in the description below discovered that there are at least 140,000 different species of viruses that seem to reside inside our bellies. And more than half of these viruses we've never really seen before anywhere in nature. In other words, the scientists were able to identify another type of a microcosm inside the microcosm of our organisms. Or basically inside our bellies. But to do all of this, they had to collect over 20,000 different samples that represented the population of 28 different countries from basically six continents. And just that sheer number of viruses found inside of our bodies is already kind of mind-blowing. But what's even more interesting is that it seems that every culture, every country in the world, and even every single person who in some sense contributed to the study itself, for the most part had relatively different viruses on the inside. In other words, there's actually quite a lot of diversity in the viral microcosm of every single person on the planet. Some viruses might belong to certain cultures, some viruses might exist in certain people, yet some other viruses might be in everyone's bellies. And in that sense, this represents an incredible opportunity to study our guts and to study viruses and bacteria living inside of us, helping us understand how all of this is connected to, for example, the foods that we eat, and also how all of this connects to human health as well. We clearly now understand that this is an extremely complex, biodiverse environment, in some sense way, way more complex than we can even imagine right now. But more importantly, it looks like for every individual on the planet, the microbiome is literally a microcosm. It's a biosphere that has no equals on the planet. Every one of our bellies are entirely different in their composition. And since we already have several major studies suggesting that whatever is happening inside your belly is directly connected to, for example, your well-being, so in other words, things like depression or even just general happiness is directly correlated with what's happening in your belly. Because of this, studies like this thus allow us to start making connections between bacteria, viruses, and of course, how all this affects our mood and our health. And this is actually something that we know so little about. We know that all of this does have a direct effect on us, we just don't really understand what exactly those effects are. And so, just like they say, you are what you eat indeed. 
whatever is happening inside your belly really kind of creates who you are emotionally, physically, and in terms of health. But once again, it's also important to understand that when we talk about viruses here, we're not really talking about the infectious, dangerous viruses like the coronavirus or things like Ebola and so on. We really are talking about those viruses specializing in eating bacteria, the bacteriophages. For the most part, that's exactly what the scientists discovered inside our bellies. And to get all of this data, well, the scientists had to actually do a lot of work. As I mentioned, they used about 28,000 samples. But unlike typical genetic research, here they used what's known as metagenomics. And that's essentially when instead of just taking one specific bacteria and trying to study it, the scientists take a sample from the environment. It can be from soil, from an ocean or a lake, or as in this case, from the human gut. And once you filter everything out, and once you essentially get all of the bacteria and all of the viruses, separate it from everything else, you can then start cloning things and discovering what sort of genes are present there. It's a lot of work and usually involves extracting all of the DNA from all of the samples at once, getting tons and tons of different copies of everything, and then trying to see if any of these tiny samples can actually be matched with something we already know. The workflow process for this is extremely complicated, so I'm not actually going to be covering this in this video, but I'm posting a link to this wonderful page by Mike Lee, who works for NASA, who actually created a pretty good guide and a pretty good explanation for how all of this works. But now imagine doing this 20,000 times. And that's basically what the scientists did in order to get all of this data for each of the individuals. And one of the more interesting discoveries coming from this paper is that, for the most part, the viruses discovered inside of our bellies were very different from other viruses that we usually refer to when it comes to infection. A lot of these viruses were not based on the RNA molecule, a lot of these were so-called DNA viruses. And these are usually more complicated viruses that often use DNA instead of RNA, and are thus seen in some way as slightly more advanced than, for example, the same virus that causes the flu. In comparison, the Ebola virus or the coronavirus that's going on right now are both RNA viruses and are a lot more primitive. At the same time, all of the virus samples came from healthy individuals with no actual serious disorders of any kind, and in that sense, there's no reason to believe that any of the people used in the sample were in some way sick. Most importantly, none of the individuals used in the study shared any specific diseases. And then there was also a discovery of a completely new species or clade of viruses known as gubophage, a virus that seems to exist inside of the guts or inside the bellies of everyone, but that we know absolutely nothing about. It's never been seen in nature and it's actually the first time we've ever discovered it. And what's more is that it seems to be the second most prominent virus inside of us, inside our bellies. The first most prominent is this right here, it's known as crassphage. But the fact that we have this other virus known as gubophage living inside and that we knew nothing about is definitely super exciting. It just means that we know so little about this microcosm inside of us that there's still a lot to discover. And although for the most part, gubophages seem to infect relatively similar cells inside our bodies, inside our guts, or actually similar bacteria in this sense, we still don't really understand what exactly their purpose is, how they affect our health, how they affect the interaction with other bacteria, and most importantly, what's preventing all of these viruses from essentially killing all of the bacteria in our bellies all at once. Something is definitely stopping them, and that something could be related to our immune system or possibly some other bacteria that's able to consume and destroy these viruses, something that I've mentioned in one of the previous videos. But unfortunately, unlike the cosmos around us, unlike the stars and galaxies out there, we actually know so little about the microcosm inside of us. We don't really understand how all of these bacteria and viruses affect us. We don't even know how many there are or, most importantly, what each of them does. And since we've discovered 140,000 different types of viruses already, it means that they all have some sort of an effect that we can't really predict right now. But this also means that there are going to be a lot of studies to follow and a lot of new studies to allow us to discover the effects of viruses inside our bodies. We'll definitely learn more about this as the time goes on, but for now, it's a great discovery and it's something to look forward to in the next few years. On this note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by joining the channel membership, or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.